We do just we just learned that uh, we do have a media briefing starting right now. Let's get to get Mayor started, Hancock there speaking. Uh, my name is Michael Hancock, the mayor of the city and county of Denver. What we're going to do today is to ask Chief Ron Thomas to give a situational report on the incident here at East High School. And uh, then we'll bring up the superintendent, Dr. Marrero, who will give a Anything situational you can share, uh, motive, update on the school and what we're going to be doing going forward here at East as well as other schools uh, throughout the district. Uh, there will be an orderly uh, time to release of students in just a few moments out of East High School. Uh, but we want to also give you an update that what we do know today is that a male student who was uh, under certain um, agreement uh, to be patted down each day here at East High School uh, shot and injured two staff members at East. What we know about them right now is that they're both, uh, one's in uh, surgery right now, the other one is stable and able to talk and to give uh, statements in terms of what happened. Uh, we know that one other student unrelated to the shooting was transported because of an allergic reaction and a visceral reaction to the, 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 the tension of the moment. Uh, nothing trumps the safety of our young people in this building and this faculty and staff. And we feel for them right now. Uh, this should never, as a parent, I can tell you, never be a concern of a parent, uh, whether or not their kids are safe in their building. And so Chief Thomas and Dr. Marrero and DPS Board of Education and I are, are committed to making sure we do everything we can uh, to, to keep our young people and the faculty and staff of these buildings safe. Let me turn it over now to uh, Chief Ron Thomas to give a situational report and uh, give you more details on what happened today. And then we'll have our superintendent, Dr. Marrero, share as well. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so what I can share at this point in time is that at approximately 9.50 this morning, a call was aired of a shooting here at East High School. Uh, officers and medical pro professionals from uh, Denver Health Medical were uh, arrived on scene very, very quickly and discovered two adult males that had suffered uh, gunshot wounds. Um, th those two individuals were transported emergent to uh, Denver Health Medical. Uh, one is currently in serious but stable condition. The other is currently in surgery listed in critical condition. Uh, what I can share as it relates to the incident that, that uh, caused those two injuries is there was a student, as was alluded to, uh, and as part of a safety plan, they were undergoing a search. Uh, during that search, uh, obviously a, a weapon was retrieved, a handgun was retrieved, and several shots were fired, striking those two individuals. Uh, that individual then fled the school, uh, but we do know who that individual is and a search is underway to try to uh, locate that, that particular individual. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, uh, Dr. Marrero from uh, Denver Public Schools who will talk about uh, uh, the school's response. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mayor. I'm deeply sorry that we're here. I really, really um, feel strongly that we shouldn't be here, but here we are. Uh, my prayers to the East uh, community and of course our two staff members who are in the hospital at the moment. Um, in terms of uh, what we're doing at East, uh, Mayor Hancock and Chief Thomas just explained in terms of what happened, I don't want to reiterate uh, the happenings of uh, earlier today. Uh, we will have an organized release. The communications should be going out to the parents right now. Um, but also tomorrow and the next day, meaning the remainder of the week, East will not be in session. In terms of what we can expect at East from here until the end of the school year, in collaboration with Chief Thomas in support of our mayor, also communicated this to the Board of Education, that we will have two armed officers here at East until the end of the school year. We're looking forward to expanding that conversation to see how we can uh, reestablish a relationship with presence at our schools, in particular our high schools. Um, in terms of the Board of Education, I believe that they're going to make themselves available tomorrow uh, in lieu of our board meeting. Uh, that'll be an opportune time to have a conversation in terms of what safety looks like in our schools uh, from here on out. En breve en español, lo que pasó está el día de hoy, no sé si fue por la mañana. Un estudiante que nosotros recibimos en enero de otro distrito llegó armado, dos oficiales o personal de la escuela se confrontaron y él disparó a los dos. Los dos uh, adultos están en, en hospital y ahora vamos a comenzar. Eh, los niños se van a ir piso a piso a la casa. 
Mañana no va a escuela aquí en East y el viernes tampoco. La semana van a tener libre. Vamos a tener dos miembros de la policía aquí uh, hasta el fin de la temporada, hasta junio. Y ojalá podamos hacer eso en la otra escuela. Yo creo que tengo el apoyo de la Junta de Educación, pero mañana a las seis, o, perdón, a las cuatro y media, la Junta de Educación está disponible para contestar o explicar el plan sobre la policía. Muchas gracias. Let me just say two things. One is the, an unrelated situation. Paramedics were in the building when the uh, shooting occurred, um, and they were able to immediately begin to uh, administer support and treatment to the individuals who were wounded, and uh, that I think will play a huge role in their ultimate recovery um, from this. And again, we'll keep them in our prayers, but we want to thank our first responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, and certainly our police department uh, who were on the scene within minutes uh, of this as it, as it occurring. And then finally, before we go to question and answer to the parents, we, I want to send a, share with you that I've had a chance to talk to a couple of them who are here, obviously. They're frustrated and they're angry, as they should be. And again, those of us who are parents and have young people in this building, um, we certainly understand their frustration and their pain. The faculty and staff are concerned. Um, we must continue to work on addressing safety in our school buildings and in our city in general, and we will. We have never stopped with that. The police department have been working uh, to have a presence outside of this building um, for quite some time. I think it's clear now that we need to do even more interdiction with our police officers inside the buildings uh, in these type of situations. So right now, those are the circumstances we know with regards to the condition of the victims. Uh, we are looking for the suspect. We will find that suspect, and uh, we will hold that suspect accountable. Uh, for his actions this morning in placing everyone in danger and certainly wounding the two staff members who were doing their job and trying to keep everyone safe at the time. So we'll open up for question and answer. Please uh, ask directly who you're talking to so we can get them to the mic. Yes, sir. For Chief Thomas. Chief Thomas. Could yes, you okay. please? We have brief time because we want to make sure we get this order released. Go ahead. Chief Thomas, can you please give us more details? You said the suspect was being patted down when the shooting happened. The person who grabbed their gun or walk us more through that if you can, sir. Well, a lot of those details will be. Can you share the details? Sure. sure. So, uh, a lot of those details will, will uh, be available to us after uh, a more in depth investigation. But what I can share with you is this particular student actually had a safety plan that was in place where they were to be searched at the beginning of the school day every day. They had been searched uh, previously to, to today and had never had a weapon on them before. However, today, uh, during that search, which, which took place away from other students, away from other school staff, uh, they did produce that we weapon and fire shots. And where did that padding down take place? Is that at the entrance of the school or where in the building? It uh, occurred in the front of the school, in the office area, again, away from students and other school staff. So they were deans, they were school administrators. School administrators, thank yes. you. Yes. Oh, who was doing the padding down? Again, it was the school administrators. Okay, yes. Chief, uh, in terms of the suspect, is this uh, a current student at East High School and is this person under the age of 18? Yes, under the age of 18, current student of East High School. Chief, how many students at East High have been padding down with this? I couldn't uh, share that with you. I mean, um, I, I imagine that there are students that have various uh, safety plans in, in place uh, that, that result in certain uh, interactions with school staff. What leads, this is no never post, what leads to a school safety plan? Like, how does a student get in that situation? Yeah, I think... Uh, it's, it's particular for each individual Yeah, student. certainly it's particular to each Could individual student. trouble, yes. though, that is indicated? Sheriff, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to share that again. That's you know, we're talking about juveniles. We're talking about students uh, in school that have been allowed to participate in school activities. Sorry, we cannot. Uh, bound by FERPA, we cannot disclose any particulars uh, about any student individual plan, whether it's academic or behavioral. No, and, it's not and that and specific student, but in general, like what happens, like how the safety plan works and what gets you there? 
Sure, there, it's uh, it's very nuanced and it's particular. They're individual, so it's based on uh, past behavior, and that's as far as I can feel comfortable saying. So it, it's uh, as a result of a previous behavior. Is there something that you can say though to parents out there who are listening to this and they hear the word nuance and they can't get details, but they want details regarding their children's safety? Sure, uh, it's uh, past educational and also behavioral experiences that each individual student may have exhibited in the past. Is this a system that takes place at more than just East High School, this uh, safety plan that you have? Can you tell me how many schools do this in the district? This is common for all schools in all districts. It's, it's part of what we have in terms of making sure that we can support the needs and behavioral uh, needs of students. So it's very common across the nation. Was the weapon recovered within the school? Has the handgun been recovered or does the suspect still have it? My understanding is that the weapon has not been recovered, but again, we do know who the individual is. We do know where they live, but we are familiar with associates uh, uh, of this individual, and so we do uh, believe we will be successful in finding that individual and that weapon very soon. Is the area where this took place, is that under video surveillance? Is that something that you guys would have uh, video of that area? Uh, I, I'm not uh, sure if there was video in this specific well, Dr. location. Know that, is that an area where there is uh, video? Surveillance of that area, Dr. Murrow? Uh, there could be. Uh, I know the team is evaluating, and uh, I also know that there has been confirmation that the student left the grounds, so that that leads me to say that yes, there is. Um, and I have to apologize. I don't want to uh, conclude this press conference because I, I want to support the students who are about to uh, be dismissed. So, pardon. Are you going to be getting names? Why aren't you releasing the name of the suspect? If you're searching for him? Because he's a juvenile. But is there a danger to the public? Okay, so you have been watching live uh, city officials, the police chief, the mayor, and the Denver Public School Superintendent Alex Marrero. They're giving a live news conference, giving us some of the information that we've been waiting on since uh, right after 10 o'clock when East High School was first put on lockdown. A shooting, two faculty members taken to the hospital. That's what we knew. What just came out from the news conference, uh, a lot more about this suspect, an 18-year-old male student there at East High School, uh, or under the age of 18, under I should say. So a juvenile, that's part of the reason they couldn't tell us a, a ton of new information, um, that a weapon was discovered during a standard daily pat-down of that student as part of a so-called safety plan. That was when those shots were fired. Two uh, school administrators uh, were hit and taken to the hospital. A lot more to, to dig in through, Micah. Absolutely. We also learned that one student was taken to the hospital as well. That was more so due to that student's reaction to what was happening around them. Um, but we are also learning from the I believe it was Chief Ron Thomas from Denver Police Department that the shooting didn't necessarily happen in front of a lot of students. It was toward the office area and mainly just faculty members. And again, those two administrators, one of those administrators in surgery right now in critical condition, the other able to to speak and talk about what happened at East High School this morning.